So in the stuff we've already looked at, we've had a look at the basic Boolean operators and we've had a look at basic expressions and then how to convert those into a truth table. So now let's go from our basic expressions into circuit diagrams. Let's start with the basic one that we did as our last truth table and I think we had A or B and B or C. Anyway, it was something to that effect. So the idea is that we've got three variables. So we've got three inputs and we put those on our left. Now we could say that this expression is equivalent to our solution and let's call our solution G. It doesn't matter what G is. Anyway, it's our solution. So we've got the three inputs and they are going to produce a single output G. Now the way that I work through these is I would start off by looking at the brackets. So here I've got B or C. So I'll start with B or C. I get my two lines close together and then I've got to put in whatever my OR symbol looks like. And it wasn't that D but it was kind of that pointy shaped D. So a bit of a curve there. My little pointy shaped D and that produces one output. Um, and then, so I've got I've got this solution, I'm just gonna put a little star there, and this is this is my little star. You wouldn't actually star it, but just for, uh, for illustration purposes. And then what I would do is I would work through, if there's no other brackets, I would work through my equation from left to right. And so the first thing I come across is A or B. Now B has been ORed together with C, but it's not that result that is ORing together with the A, it's just B. So I take my B and I split it before it goes into that OR, and then I OR it together with A. And that produces an output. So let's put make that as a little dot, so it's a little dot. And then it ends together with the result of my brackets. So I take that and I head out here, I end the two results and it goes into output G. Okay, so that was probably a little bit of a complicated one to start with, but when working through one of these we start with our brackets and we deal with any knots that we might have and then we basically work from left to right. So let's have a look at another one. Let's have a look at, let's go with not A and B and C. So we've got, and we'll say that that's equivalent to Q, just because we can. So we start off with A, B and C as our inputs and Q is going to be our output. Now we've got multiple ands here and they can actually all go together into one big and because they're all equivalent. The only problem here is that C goes in as is, because it's just a C. B goes in as is, but A has been knotted before it gets there. So we've got to knot A and then feed it as input. Okay, so it's just about looking at the equivalencies and so all ors are equal to ors and all ands are equal to ands, so you can put them into the one uh, the one gate. Let's try something a little bit more complicated. Let's go with not A and B, or not P and Q. Now, I'm just making these up on the spot, by the way, but the approach that I take is the same no matter what. Let's say that that is equivalent to R. So we've got four inputs this time. So remember that we always just put down what our variables are. So we've got an A, we've got a B, we've got a P, and we've got a Q. Now there's a not in front of the P. That doesn't matter. It still stays as P in, uh, in the initial outlay. And they're going to be equivalent to R. So as I said, we will always start with our braces, brackets, whatever you want to call them. So we're going to take A, 
we're going to end it together with B. Now because that knot is outside of the brackets, it happens after we've done the ending. So we take that result and we knot it. Okay. Then OR is equivalent to AND, so we read it left to right. So we are going to OR this result with not P. So let's produce a not P and we're going to OR those two together. A little pointy kind of one. Not very good at drawing these. Um, and then we keep going through our expression and we AND all of this with Q. So let's take our Q, head it up there going to end them to produce R. Okay, hopefully you're able to follow that. Let's try something else, something that uses two brackets. Okay, let's try, just to put a bit of variety in, let's try with not A or B. And let's end that together with not A or not B. And that is equivalent to Q. Okay, so Q is over there on the right. Then we've got A and we've got B. Now lovely and, and messy because we've only got two variables and we're going to have to work through these. Let's start off with a set of brackets. Um, just out of consistency, because I like to be a bit consistent, I'm going to go from left to right. So I'm going to start with the left set of brackets and we'll deal with A or B. So I take my A, grab a B over there, and I'm going to all the two results, all the two variables. And I can't forget, I've got my little or, uh, my little knot out there, so I'm going to knot that result. Okay, that means I have now done this part. So I can move on to my other set of brackets. And this is going to or together not A and not B. So I'm going to split off my B and put a little join there. And split off my B and I'm going to put a knot on that one. And I'm going to split off my A and I'm going to put a knot on that one. Then I have to or those two together. And then I've done this part. So all that's left for me to do is or, sorry, and my two results. Ending the two of those to be a Q. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense for how you would approach going from an expression through to a circuit diagram. Good luck with those. Um, in the next step, we're going to have a look at circuit diagrams back to the expression.